When we last left our hero, Jebediah Kerman, he was stranded on the distant moon of Minmus. But back on Kerman, there is hope. Bob and Bill Kerman recruit some other person who I can't remember the name of. But they also borrow an experimental rocket. And when I say experimental, I mean that since they've changed all the thrust and fuel consumption numbers for all the, the rocket motors, I have no clue if this will get to the moon. Never mind Minimus. So yeah, this is the design. Um, I'm basically putting... The reason why I've got this kind of tripod design is because I wanted a, a toroidal aero spike underneath the main module. And uh, since you can't actually put any decouplers underneath it, I had to build the first stage out around it. And you see that it goes pretty well, nicely into orbit. Um, once in orbit, I had the problem that somehow it was impossible to steer. Even with the reaction control system up on the front, it wouldn't turn. It ended up getting locked in position. I have no idea what was causing that. So I took a risk and jettisoned everything else and just left the, the landing stage to perform the Minmus injection burn. Other than that glitch, we're in relatively good shape and the journey out to Minmus is rather uneventful. Now we're in for several hours of uh, maneuvering as we try to line up orbits. And then once we get within about a kilometer or so, it's time to uh, turn to the Kerbal on the right and say, I don't remember what your name is, but we'd really like you to take a, a walk outside and jump in that ship for us. You know, flying these EVAs is a whole lot easier than performing rendezvous with the RCS system for the main, the main reason being that the suit automatically halts any rotation and basically keeps everything lined up with the camera. You know, when you're using RCS, you end up having to manually adjust the, the rotation and the translation at the same time. So the suit is a whole lot easier. And uh, yeah, it's a rather easy ride to get this uh, Kerbinaut out towards this uh, abandoned spacecraft. And uh, he can jump on board and uh, take it home. Now, the hard part with rendezvousing with um, Jebediah on the surface is that the map screen will not show where he is. So I end up switching back and forth a couple of times to try and figure out where he is approximately based on the features on the surface. And actually, this turns out to be terrible because when you're standing on the surface, you see a different um, map on the map screen as you do when you're orbiting at a certain distance. So in the end, I just you know, drop my spacecraft down into a low orbit until I see where he is and uh, start basically eyeballing the descent. And um, yeah, you know, I kind of translate left and right, to try to um, compensate for this. Takes a bit of time, uh, but I've done this maneuver a million times and I've got so much fuel. This is not going to be a problem. Um, no doubt in the future I can go out and try to do some, you know, try to land on Minmus using six parts or whatever. But right now I'm just happy to be able to take this spacecraft down to the surface. So yeah, we're getting in and as you can see, I'm translating left and right, try to get as close to Jebediah as possible. He's standing on one of the flat moon lakes, so um, it's actually relatively easy. It's going to be really easy to land near him. It's just a question of trying to get as close as possible. And uh, there we are. Yeah, we're about 1.2 kilometers away. And the only thing here is that um, Jebediah has a long way to walk. So let's try getting a little closer. I'm not good at this. Uh, I, I think part of the problem is there's no compass telling me what way my camera is oriented relative to the, the artificial horizon. So I'm, I'm completely guessing and just trying to turn the rocket and thrust and hopefully get a little closer. You see, the thing is the Kerbals, um, they run across the surface at one meter per second. So, you know, 1.2 kilometers, that's uh, 20 minutes. And uh, I don't want to have 20 minutes. I want to see if I can speed things up a little. I guess he has some fuel left, but, you know, I think uh, I'm just going to walk back. So, yeah, um, no problem. I land, I'm getting within uh, about couple of hundred meters that takes a few minutes and bill and bob have one very important job left they need to extend the ladder so that jebediah kerman can actually climb on board this huge thing 
And after that, it literally is just a case of trekking across the frozen surface of Minmus for a few minutes. Thankfully, I can uh, cut that out of the video like all the other boring bits. And yes, he runs through the ladder, turns around, gets on, and climbs up, and the team are reunited. But yeah, there's something not quite right here. Um, Jeb's usually in the middle. Well, uh, well, let's fly home like this, just for the, the novelty value. Um, interestingly, you'll notice that uh, he is still his calm self. So uh, all those people out there that had the, the theory that he was calm because he couldn't see out the window, I think we've just managed to squash that particular theory. But that's it. Returning home is an easy job now. Um, although apparently there's some glitches I've seen that, that when I switched back to this, the return on the other spacecraft had got all messed up, so I don't know what's going on there. But there we go, a successful return mission. And the team is back together, as they say. Of course, the whole point was that uh, Jeb had bet Bill and Bob that he could land on Minmus and return using only his jetpack. So you can see why Bill and Bob were so eager to travel such great distances for just uh, their friend Jebediah. Surely was his friend, but there was money involved. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.